it all week today because there have been some new developments. Uh, the Premier making an announcement about better consumer protection in the real estate industry, and this is what Christy Clark had to say today. So that is very interesting, and we wanted to know what Vancouver Realtors thought. So we have two Realtors in the studio, Keith Roy, who we spoke to yesterday. Uh, which firm are you with? Remax Select. Okay, and Steve Soretsky, also a Realtor. And you're from Vancouver as well? Which firm? Yeah, I'm with uh, Sutton West Coast. Okay, so first of all, Keith, uh, your thoughts on hearing the Premier saying an end to self-regulation. Well, I saw this coming. I mean, Realtors, unfortunately, have as an industry, we've basically stood around and done nothing. We've set up task forces and we've set up committees and we've talked about these ideas, but we haven't done anything to make changes necessary for consumer protection. And so we're going to be handed a set of rules from, from a provincial regulator and a new superintendent who's dedicated for real estate, which is, is overall a good thing for consumer protection. Most realtors who are conducting themselves in an appropriate manner are really excited to see some of these changes because it's gonna weed out some of the bad apples. Why did the industry sit around and not address issues? I tried to deal with the Real Estate Council of BC in the past. Very difficult to get a hold of anyone, very difficult to get an interview. It didn't really seem like they were that proactive or even that harsh on realtors who had been found guilty of misconduct. Some of it is a regulatory regime in which they were operating. You know, they're limited by the amount of fines that they could have given out before. So there were structural limitations to what they could do. I think there might be a staffing issue with some of these operations where uh, you're kind of governed by realtors, but you're staff members and you don't want to upset the realtors. And it's a little bit of self, it's a bit of self protection involved. Well, yeah, because there was a whole idea about we don't like to see police policing themselves. People said we don't like to see realtors uh, regulating realtors. Steve, what did you think when you heard the Premier say today of end self regulation? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really uh, totally opposed to it. Um, I think a little bit of it is kind of a scapegoat in terms of getting away from the actual issues at hand. Which are? Uh, I believe that they are obviously the foreign capital coming in and uh, speculation, which is you know creating some of the issues with the, in terms of affordability. Okay, well, see, we keep hearing from politicians and officials that we don't know, we don't have the data, we don't really know. We hear from Cameron Muir, mm -hmm. uh, the economist with the Real Estate Board, that well, it's only four percent. What is it? What's the real story? I mean, I think the evidence is out there. I think they're just kind of hiding from it. I mean, if you look at it, there's tons of reports out there. Uh, tons of economists coming out, uh, professors, I mean, these are very smart people. And I think those are, you know, more reliable than in terms of someone that's coming from a, a bias, bias point of view. Okay, so Keith, do you agree that uh, it's the elephant in the room that the province is not addressing foreign investment? Well, it's, it's highly coincidental that the Premier has decided to take over the regulation of the real estate industry just a couple months before the next election. She says that the real estate industry has had 10 years to get it right. Well, how long has she been Premier? How long have the Liberals been in power and they haven't touched the real estate sector? The word, the word of her campaign is going to be the middle class. And the middle class is about affordability. Not to be confused with affordable housing, just affordability. The general ability of a working class family to buy a home in the lower mainland. That's all being driven. You, you've got two solutions. You can either stop the supply of foreign money or you can change the zoning and increase the supply of housing. And it, it, how much percent of foreign money? I mean, this is the, the big question. One, I'd invite you to come sit in an open house with me on the weekend and have a look, and I'll show you what that looks like. But beyond that, if grandma on the west side sells her house for four or five million dollars to an offshore buyer, and they tear her house down and build a new one, and grandma gives the money to the boomers, and the boomers give the money to the kids, and those kids buy houses and the grandkids buy condos, we don't count that as foreign money, but that's where it all started. The big money came from some sort of foreign investment. We don't produce anything of great value here in Vancouver that justifies the prices of houses we have. So it's coming from somewhere else. I would agree. So why do you think the province has been so reluctant to actually admit that foreign investment is a big driver in the economy? We're seeing you know, record kind of profits from the property transfer tax going into government coffers. Do they not want to address it just because it's too lucrative? Real estate has become our economic driver, Steve? Yeah, I mean, that's entirely what is holding up the, the Canadian economy. You look at Vancouver and Toronto, I mean, Everything's propped up on real estate, the amount of money that they're bringing on property transfer taxes, uh, I think is huge. Um, I mean, I was actually just in a, in, a, in a course recently with a whole bunch of realtors in the room, and it's just an interesting point of view. It's basically some of them, you know, that she came up with the uh, shadow flipping thing, 
but some of them kind of saw it as another way for her to basically claim some more property transfer tax. And so it's kind of like, okay, well, what is her true intentions here? Well, what do you think? 60% of, of the people in the lower mainland own their house. You don't want a headline that says, 60% of people lose equity in home and suffer inability to retire early. So you don't really want to attack the price of houses, but you want to be seen to be doing something. And attacking realtors is a really good way to be seen to be doing something. And don't get me wrong, we've got a lot of problems in our industry, and there's 28 solutions that came out in the Independent Advisory Group report yesterday, all of which are excellent, all of which the province is going to act on. I look forward to seeing them implemented. And they're going to make a change, and they're going to increase consumer protection. But don't confuse the issue of realtor regulation with housing affordability. We don't control the price of the house. We control the rules of the game. Yeah, exactly. And you know, these days, too, when we see foreign investment, we had a, an expert on, a money laundering expert on about half an hour ago. She said it's a huge problem. The government's not doing anything about it. Realtors, she said, were part of the problem because realtors are supposed to play some role in stopping, you know, dirty money from coming in. Here's, here's how I fight crime. I look at your ID before I sell you a house. And that's if, it? And if you're from a country that's listed on my predetermined list of dangerous countries like Afghanistan or some countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, I, I write down possible risk and then I submit that to the government. That's how I fight crime. So that seems like a pretty loosey-goosey affair. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's happening here to a, a degree where we're seeing average people priced out because of dirty money? I, I'm not sure that there's as much money laundering affecting the prices that people think. It is foreign money. It's all legitimate. Um, or most of it's legitimate. Uh, whether or not it was legitimate in that country is a whole other question. But once it gets here and it's turned into a house and then that house is sold and the money, it's been laundered. That's money that's in our economy now. So how does the province move now to make housing more affordable, Steve? I mean, I think they ultimately they have to come up with some kind of restrictions uh, in terms of foreign capital coming in. Uh, just talk about, you know, a, a speculation tax on, on empty homes. Uh, I think that would be very good. I mean, there's there's multitudes of ways to do it. I mean, ultimately that comes down to the government and the economists. That's kind of their area of expertise. But I can tell you right now, like, you know, increasing supply, I don't think is, is a, you know, is a, is a solution. I think. Why? It just takes too long. I mean, there's only so much land we have here in Vancouver. Uh, all the regulations, it's just, you know, we're looking at two or three years to build a condo development. Like, Well, and I think we might see them speed that up because Trudeau is talking about time, you know, transit funding and what have you to changing zoning around, tra hmm. you know, high transportation areas. So we might see some changes, but I wonder, won't developers just build luxury condos that people can't afford anyway? Like, how does, how does that make... How does increasing supply really make it more affordable to live here? Yeah, that's some of it. There's not a... There's not a problem in real estate in Vancouver that can't be solved with a tax, according to pretty much every politician, particularly the mayor. I mean, that's his solution to everything in this city. But here's a, here's a good idea to increase affordability for people who own houses. Most of the infrastructure in the Lower Mainland is paid for by federal tax dollars and provincial tax dollars. The municipal taxes you pay go to fund your city services. All of these non-residents who own houses uh, all over the Lower Mainland are vacant. You could quadruple their property taxes because they're not paying the income taxes that go right. to support all those other infrastructure projects. Quadruple their property taxes and then use that additional revenue to subsidize the property taxes of all of their neighbors who are already paying their income taxes. And so instead of having just another tax that goes into an affordable housing fund to pay for low income people to live in Coal Harbor, which isn't, that's a separate problem. The, the problem of middle class affordability is just strictly the government has made it so hard to own a home. Owning a house in Vancouver, you almost never qualify for the homeowner's grant anymore. Your property taxes yeah. on a regular house off of Main Street could be upwards of eight or $900 a month. People who've lived in these houses for 30, 40 years on fixed incomes are now paying 30% of their annual income into property taxes. I know, it's crazy. Let me ask you this though, uh, Steve. You know, I'm curious when we talk about the province saying we don't want to do anything that removes people's equity from their homes, wouldn't it only affect people who bought in this last frenzied period of time? Because, you know, housing is, is relative, right? I mean, if the prices are reduced by 10 or 15 percent, how is that really hurting anyone if everybody's property values are dropping? Yeah, I mean, that's what I think. I mean, I've personally seen a lot of stories where some of the older homeowners that have been in their house for a while, they're actually hoping for a price reduction really um just so you know they can hopefully get their kids in there at some point down the road 
Because right so, then they make a three million dollar profit instead of a four million dollar profit. I mean, I don't. How how do they burst the bubble by restricting foreign owners? I just don't get it. Well, I, I, at this point, I think everyone's like, okay, prices are high enough. Let's just stop. Right. right now. That's let's, what I think. Let's just stay where we are. Nobody nobody actually wants the bubble to burst. No. There's there's the constant people who always want it to burst, but mm -hmm. nobody wants the prices to go down. But people do want it to be to remain affordable. And in order to do that, we need different styles of housing, different available product. And we need more townhouses. We need more three-bedroom apartments. We need more density. We need, we need more density. Mm -hmm. but, All right, guys, uh, really great conversation. And thank you both for coming in. That's Keith Roy and Steve Zaretsky, both Vancouver Realtors. Thanks for your thoughts. I want to know what you think about what the guys said. You can leave a message on the buzz line, 604-331-BUZZ. Email me, lynda at cknw.com. And coming up at 5.15,